But day critters and welcome back for another weekend another batch of vox machina episodes we got another three today last week i said it at the end of the reactions in the end of the episodes i thought they were 10 out of 10 they started off this season with a bang i thought it was phenomenal from top to bottom and i said I said compared to season one, it was even better. And I stand by that, to be honest. Uh, I love season one, but you guys hopped up this Chroma Conclave and it didn't disappoint. Uh, so I thought they did a phenomenal job. And that's even without me fully understanding and grasping all the elements of that episode. You guys filled me in on a lot of things in the comment section. So we actually got a lot to go over. I'm going to talk about it briefly before we get into the episode. So I'll, I'll drop a timestamp of exactly when the reaction starts. Uh, if you want to jump straight to that and then maybe come back to this. So first off, we're going to start with the attachment between uh, between Vex and Vex. I know I had some questions as far as like exactly why it's so strong. I get it. They're they're twins. So that gives them a deeper bond than normal season. And that's not something I was doubting, um, because even if they weren't twins or just regular siblings, uh, I would get that attachment that they have into each other or have to each other. Um, and a lot of this was on my part. I feel like not fully grasping why I, I, I guess my question was when in some of the scenes that we got and we've seen some of this dating back or going back to season one, how strong their attachment was with uh, Vax being or Vex, excuse me, being cautious of Keyleth and Vex's little flirty relationship. Um, j just her overall being protective over him. And I think the main thing that I kind of question is they're, they, they've both been abandoned in life. They both have an attachment to each other because they're really all they have, uh, which is something you guys pointed out in the comment section too. And I, I just, I just wondered why, Vax's attachment to Vex was so much stronger um, or, or it felt at least in the way the lines are delivered and the, the way the music kind of up keeps it, it feels like there's a lot more emphasis on Vax's attachment than Vex and I, I guess that could be a thing of where uh, Vex kind of is a bit more independent um, and Vax just feels a lot more desperate to me. Uh, and I get it, but, uh, I, I think that also plays into the fact that I haven't exactly seen the, the full dynamic of, I know we got flashbacks of it in last episode a little bit, but with their father and their mother, I know she's gone or even by the point of that flashback, she was already gone. I just don't, I have questions with that and just me talking about it and kind of rambling through my thoughts. Uh, I'm realizing how, it, how deep this connection is with them, uh, and how deep this story and plot line just for them is. You guys told me back in season one, how deep it was or how deep it goes. Um, so I'm hoping we get more elaboration on it, but as far as the, da the dad, I wondered, cause obviously there's some type of prejudice that comes from the dad. Uh, I don't know if he's still alive or still in the background somewhere. Um, obviously he, the prejudice comes from the fact that they're half elf, half elven. Um, but I wondered how exactly did their, his dad and his mom's relationship formulate? Like, did he not pick her out? Was it, was it like a heat of the moment type thing? And it just happened. Was this a secret? Did, was he okay with it at first before the rest of his race found out and then they kind of shunned him for it. So he in turn shunned the children. Um, I don't know exactly, but we'll see. But also with that relationship what I was saying as far as me kind of overlooking some details and why they're, they're so attached to each other. Um, I, I, I just feel that with, uh, Vax in particular, I didn't take into account not o only their feelings, but also their, their classes. So him being half elf, half rogue, uh, she's Ranger, right? Um, but the dynamics of his his character in his class, he he typically I, I don't know if this is common between all rogues, but I feel like uh, that ass assassin stealthy type character would be pretty uh, solo. Like, I don't know if he would or it's typical for rogues to travel in groups like they have here with Vox Machina. 
Um, so I didn't take into account how independent once he and Vex uh, left his family that they're probably I don't know how long they were on their own before they actually joined up with uh, the legend of Vox Machina or this whole crew. So that that's something I didn't take into account, which for sure adds to his attachment to her. Um, not only I don't know if there's a, another deal of him losing his mother and then vex being the only real female in his life also deepens that connection along with them being twins um i think my main question came from or main reason from questioning that relationship was based off the fact that his just set seemed completely more desperate than vex and i think that's just uh the fact that she's I don't know. Just I, I just say more independent. I don't. I can't exactly place it. I'm gonna elaborate on this um, more in the post uh, episode discussion. But I I, I want to cover some more things before we get into it. And we should probably just jump into the the elephant in the room. Vex being dead. Uh, you guys filled me in on that. Uh, I, I kind of thought. That was a possibility, but I wasn't with this type of show. I was like, there's no way in stakes stakes. I've already noticed it in the campaign last season. We noticed it, but I was like, there's no way in episode three. She's already dead for good. But you guys said she's dead, dead. I don't I don't know if there's a possibility of like trading vestiges and doing some type of ma I'm, I take it that's going to be like the the focus of the rest of the season or whatever the case may be to save her or get her back pike wasn't able to heal her obviously um but that completely shocked me so i i kind of felt bad after when you guys said she's dead dead that I didn't i didn't react like she was dead dead because I was like, no, as soon as I saw, she'll be good. She'll be all right. She'll be back. They'll save her. They'll bring her soul back and put it back in her body and she'll be just normal. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to be the case now. And I love that, but I hate that because I love Vex, but she might be gone for good. And I kind of have to deal with that and see exactly what comes of it or what they're able to do and the grief, the fallout that's going to come of it from uh, the whole group. Uh, is there going to be some type of strife between uh, Vax and Percy? Because Percy is the one who initiated the trap that killed Vex. Um, also, you guys told, told me that it's called like a, a power word kill or something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Or it may. Uh, there were some of you who said that and also said it just could have been some type of of trap uh, or a different trap. So uh, I'm looking forward to elaboration on that. Also, this armor that was on Pervine in the coffin, this is the armor that they mentioned in Calamity when uh, the cast asked what he was wearing. So that was a cool little tidbit. And going into the season, it was like a, a situation where I was completely hyped uh, to get into it. But I, I, I wonder, I even asked after season one if I should not watch Calamity or the campaigns before season two so I could so everything would be fresh and new to me but I'm glad that coming into the season and watching the start of it all of it still feels new to me um there's a lot more to learn there's so much lore there's so many small tidbits that connect the campaign uh to the animation there's subtle changes that uh I'm learning and, and noticing and you guys are filling in the gaps for me in the comment section uh so that's been great um you guys touched on cash a little bit saying that his scars and his eyes uh lend to something deeper but you don't know if there'll be enough time in the in this series this season to cover that I hope there is uh, but you guys said there's a lot just with Vex and Vex, uh, his plot line and everything else they got to cover uh, with the Chroma Conclave. There is already a lot that has developed and we have to get into. So if some things are left, I, I, I see a, a huge cliffhanger coming. Uh, I just don't know what it's going to be. And I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this season being over in general. But also with Grog, you guys mentioned the belt gave me some details on that you called it the um the uh belt of dwarven kind you mentioned that it it offers an ability of plus two um constitution i believe and then also uh an advantage over um 
uh, what was it, charisma or persuasion checks. Um, I don't know exactly how uh, that apply in this series, but we'll see. You also said uh, with the whole beard thing that Travis was like over the moon when he got that in the campaign, um, because Goliaths apparently don't grow beards uh, unless they have this belt. And I think even one of you said that there's only a 50% chance that you can grow the beard once you put the belt on i don't know fact check me on that um i think there was two more that you guys uh, more abilities but the two i was most excited for um were abilities as far as him being uh stronger or more resilient towards poison uh which is big for against raishan because i think raishan is the one he attacked with his axe and then uh shattered like on his chest or something obviously that has nothing to do with that but um him being stronger against raishan um in general against that poison uh that could be a big deal also you said that it it grants like dark vision i don't know what that is but you said dark vision up to 60 feet um so i don't know if that's just like he sees threats coming uh a lot sooner or what but uh we're already 11 minutes in and <laughs> This is just the intro. Y'all asked for these 60 minute reactions again. Uh, I'm not going to get quite up to that because we got three to get into, but we're going to get into this episode right now and we'll talk about whatever we need to cover at the end of it. So stay tuned for the post episode discussion. But for right now, we got episode four of Vox Machina. Let's get into it. This is, it has to be a flashback. It's crazy how much they look exactly the same as now. I've been hearing horrid sounds. Hmm. Oh, fuck me. Let's not stick around to find out. Savage. I need to start taking bets on the over-under of when we'll see blood. <laughs> or amount of blood we'll see. What the hell are these things? They look like dinosaurs and dragons combined. I can't tell. Max. Oh, is that Trinket? Oh, they the first time they met Trinket? No, look. Oh, they, they, they rescued him. Hmm. He's suffering. He needs mercy. Whatever happens, it's out of our control. Oh, she loved him right away. What the? Wait, what? It's okay. Easy. Easy. Oh, this isn't Trinket. What? What? Just, uh, uh, critical role if you don't stop playing with my, There's a Trinket. If you don't stop playing with my emotions. <laughs> we won't hurt you. What are you doing? I guess it makes sense because that bear was full grown, but. Sometimes you have to embrace what's in front of you. Not fight it. Oh, look at a little trinket. I kind of hope, uh, okay, so we're, we're kind of forming the group through flashbacks. I wonder if we'll get, like, how they met up with every single member of Vox Machina. Back to reality. Where the hell y'all been at? Oh, shit, they found it. Pure! There's nothing to heal. Oh, jeez. Nobody do something! See, we can't just stand by. Let me see her. Ooh, what, what we can could you try do? resurrecting her. A revival rite? I, I've never tried that before. Yeah, not many have. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, the shit. He's he, he doing blood rituals? Who was with her? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah, there's gonna be an issue between them. You leave a, a brief one. Oh, shit, what the hell is. She's gonna owe me big time for this. If it works. Okay, I saw part of one of your comments that mentioned he has some type of connection to deities, but I didn't keep reading it because I didn't want to be spoiled. So I, I take it that's something based in that. Gods have no authority here. Uh, well, can we maybe move back somewhere else? Yeah. Jeez, look at all the the feathers falling. Huh. That is funny that this happened. And then he's been seeing her consistently through those first three episodes. It, can he make like a, a deal with her? Like kind of like a crossroads demon? That sounds weird. But... Jeez. Jeez. Look how easily she just shattered his magic. The touch of a finger. No. 
Okay, there's the soul leaving the body. Oh, I love that image of them kind of like tethered to. She considering it? Hold on. I really like how they're handling the Matron of Ravens. I know I'm not completely familiar with her other than... Ooh, look at y'all being tricky in the comment section. Trying to misdirect and shit. Shit, I'm amazing. <laughs> I touched the armor. And you... You were... The Vex. <laughs> no, like dead dead. <laughs> Fuck. Uh -huh. You uh -oh. Uh -oh. saved her. You're not out of the woods yet. If I died, mm -mm. then how... <gasps> How's he still standing? Vax? Oh, is he like her champion now? How are you wearing it? I... I don't know. You okay, Vax? Yeah, fine. That was just intense. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hyped he got some new armor, but I don't know what he's going to hey. do. What's the penalty? You two ditched us before. What was that about? No, yeah, where the hell we you didn't go? ditch you. We simply couldn't find you. You know, if we were going to ditch, why would I come back and help your friend? Hmm. Fair point. Because you didn't find shit? Get... What did I just do? I don't know. I guess we're going to find yeah. out. I don't like it either. But they got the vestige before we did. Then we'll take it back. Mm. We just or just beat them to the next, next one. one. Stay close, you guys. I feel like we should be keeping an eye out for traps. Pretty sure Grog set them all off on the way in. <laughs> this shit is so good. What are those? Is this a calamity? Nice, nice. Ooh, is that is that cash? What is why does that look like cash? What the hell was that? Jesus. Jesus. Ooh, what's that one with the glowing head? This fence is made. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. Let it go. We lost. Not yet. We didn't. Uh, I I don't know. Just... This shit is epic. 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 I I'm on the verge of saying this is blowing season one out of the water already. If they're worthy of the armor, well, this will be child's play for them. Mm mm. Mm mm. Mm mm. Stop messing with Vax, man. And Vex, for that matter. What the hell is... Oh my goodness. <laughs> you walk right past it. You think it was? <laughs> Uh-oh. We They gotta face a whole lot of bosses or end bosses in these first couple episodes. <laughs> Jeez. And also, you guys, let me know that mages, there are a lot stronger ones. Ooh, but they're known as, you said, glass cannons? Because they take a lot of damage. What? Petrified. Oh, petrified. <laughs> oh like, like uh, Harry Potter. But he's actually stoned in this one. Um, but glass cannons take a lot of damage, but shell out a lot of damage, too. Ooh. Oh, that's who that is. That's Purple. Why he looks so badass? I imagine him looking like old and like purplish hair and like real, I don't know, bougie. <laughs> Not badass. Mm. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Ooh, 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 <laughs> Jesus! They are getting this wrecked. Is getting out of control. I can't be a part of this. I won't. You would betray the Slayer's take for them. And he's a good dude. It seems like Team Cash. Let's get it. Let's get it. Or, or maybe he just he just care about Keyless. Freak you, Cash. <laughs> oh, no. get him back in the locket. Aren't they gonna question why he came out of your locket in the first place? Jeez. 
Okay, so that was basically just her Pokemon. I thought she had more controller over it than that. Oh, shit. Sheesh. I just realized that's like the same armor he's wearing, though. Oh my goodness. What is... Oh my, look at his hand from punching him. And oh! And this is like his wheelhouse too, like hand to hand. I know he's more stealthish and um, assassin like, but he's getting his ass whooped. Oh my goodness, everybody's getting petrified. Except for him, I guess. The only one not moving. Mmm. Mmm. Is that Vax? Or, I keep calling her Vax, Vax. It's out of our control. Oh, he took the armor just by relinquishing. Oh. The new champion. That is perfect. Uh, champion, nice, nice. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Amazing for story, but I don't know exactly what he gives up by being this. That music, that music. Whoop that ass. Oh my god, he's got super speed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, <laughs> he's even got like the superhero poses down already. We didn't mean for any of this to happen, I swear. Save your apologies for later, help my friends. Mm, I wonder if it changed his mentality a little bit. He seems a I don't know, a lot more confident. Or somewhat more confident. We'll talk about this after the episode too. Nice. Whoa. Is that Vax? How is he doing that? Vestige. It has to be. It definitely is. But there's more to it. Oh ho ho ho. Right in the eye. Oh look at that. That's a wallpaper. That might be the thumbnail. That's in the thumbnail. I like that shit. No chance. Wrecked your shit. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, what that looked like. <laughs> Let me stop. Well, damn. <laughs> Things got out of hand. Mistakes were made. Oh, mistake. Yeah, really? They keep disappearing. They've disappeared twice already and stalked you. We couldn't let a vestige fall Get out of there. Hands, but clearly. Get out of there. Y'all notice that water? Uh, listen, you know, we'd love to apologize all afternoon, but if you don't want to drown, we should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, uh, Is he gonna, he might I forgive him right away apologize. since she's back. I was careless. I don't know what I would have done different. <laughs> Jeez. Right. That went well. I guess Osisa knows what she's doing. Hmm. And listen, I know it won't make up for what happened, but. Oh, don't tell I me we're splitting up our. Ooh. It keeps a creature safely tucked away in a tiny pocket plane until you need it. Oh, is it just that one creature? Hey. What? His antlers watching me walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I got an ass that won't stop. <laughs> she kept a creature in it. Hmm. Do you know what I bet would fit in it nicely? Uh, me. <laughs> How many can you me hold in there? <laughs> that is kind of awesome. He's got a Pokeball. Mm. I don't like seeing Vax away from the group like this. Hello. Like him isolating himself. Obviously it's the Matron. But... Oh, it, does he have to do like her bidding? Is this happening like right now? Like collect souls for her? I don't know. Whatever this all means, we'll figure it out. That's all, so. Nothing's changed. Oh, you sure about that? Everything's changed. That must be directly from the campaign. Like a line that pulled straight from it, because I've heard. Ooh, was that Ripley? 
because I've heard some of you guys throw that line out there. Like, after her death, everything changed. Is that the end? Oh, that's the end already. Phenomenal episode. I'm going to watch these credits and we'll be back right in a second just to discuss the episode briefly briefly okay so phenomenal episode i just want to touch on something real quick just to bounce back to the intro when i talked about the the relationship or the dynamic between uh vex and vax uh and their codependence on each other i think another thing that kind of threw me off like leading up into it like wondering why he was so desperate to keep her uh not I almost said attraction, but uh, a- affection or their their bond is because I- I've seen Vax. Obviously, you you get those vulnerable moments, which I enjoy seeing um, between him and her. But I feel like it's almost tied to him and her, if that makes sense. Because when I see him interact with other members of the group or other people in general, or when he's like called to action or to duty. He comes across extremely more, uh, I don't want to say masculine, but uh, if if you want to use the term alpha, I kind of hate that word, but that's what it seems like. Like he he doesn't when it's when it's time for him to step up and play that role and be the man and uh, take charge. He really doesn't. It, it's still in the back of his mind. It's all to kind of protect uh, Vax, but at the same time, I feel like he's more dependent in those moments. So I'm wondering in, in these times where I, I kind of questioned and said, I don't like him isolating himself. I wonder if it's going to benefit him or be a detriment to him more. So I guess only time will tell. We'll see how that plays out, but just something interesting I thought about while we were going through the episode. Uh, now I'm going to stream, um, or scroll through the timeline real quick, just to talk about a few points before we jump into the next episode. Uh, I like that we're continuing with the flashbacks. Great. I, I give me all that. Give me and and usually that's something in shows. I'm like, I don't need the flashbacks are nice, but keep them brief. Um, in this show, I feel like they're doing them perfectly, and they they they're kind of seamless with the the storyline. I, I feel like they're doing a good job with that. Um, and I want more of them to be honest, but the thing is we're only getting like 25 minute episodes, so they can't give us any more without detracting from the whole story they have to tell within these 12 episodes that they're going to drop this season. So, um, I love that trinket. I should have known that wasn't trinket that we first walked up on that was uh, dying with the arrows in her back just because of the, the size and the age of that it looked to be. But I'm, I'm not sure from this point, like I said, they look exactly how they look now. Um, I think I've asked before how slowly or the rate of which elves um, age uh, because they look exactly the same. And not to mention, even though her, their dad looked like he had some age on him, he still looked pretty young. Um, so I'm wondering exactly how old he was when they left him. Uh, but it was fun to see Trinket as a little baby or a little cub um, and to see them their first initial meetup. Like I said, I hope that we do kind of go down the line and see how we ran into everybody um, on the team. Uh, but only time will tell. Um and you got you guys are good. You got me. You got me. Uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, that or Vex is back. Uh, still don't know exactly what's gonna come of it. What's what the we? I was talking about the fallout from episode three and her death. Would what that would be? Uh, but now I'm wondering exactly what it'll be for her coming back and him taking the armor. We we've got a glimpse into it. Uh, but I still don't know exactly what it means. Um, so we'll only have to see cash. I I hope, I hope we see from him often, him and Zara often. Um, obviously they're splitting ways right now. She just gave her, her amulet, um, to use her little pokeball, uh, trinket ball, whatever you want to call it. But I hope we get to see more of them or maybe that that'll be a focus of season three, because like you guys said, I can tell even even if I was coming into this butt naked, blindsided, brand new and knew nothing, I would be like, there's a lot of plot lines unfolding. Are we and I knew that amount of episodes that we were getting. Are we going to have enough time to uh, get through all this without it feeling rushed? Um, So there's a lot going on and I hope we get to. 
dive into Cash and Zara more. But if we don't, I'll understand it and be looking forward to more with them soon. Um, I'm just knocking on wood a little bit, hoping that we get to see it uh, in this season, or at least a little bit more, because he's interesting. He he came out with the uh, the I forget what they're called, but like the sigils around her body, the the little blood uh, ritual he he started, uh, and it it looked like it could have worked. If it wasn't for the matron just popping that bubble. Um, so that's something interesting um, that I'm looking forward to see more. Uh, the matron. The matron. I, I, I don't know. What is this bond between? Obviously, they have a serious bond now. But it must have. Something must have been there to form that bond prior to. Uh, close and down encounters with death. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a thing or maybe that he's just been around death a lot of his life. I don't know if it's a class uh, specific thing for him to see death. Uh, that seems weird to me, but I don't, it could be. Um, but he, the fact that he was seeing the matron of death before actually interacting with her and then offering up his life for vexes. And she jumped at the, the matron jumped at the opportunity to take it. Why him specifically? I, that's my question when it comes to that. I, I like it. And it's great for the story. It adds more depth as if it needed it. But uh, I'm, I, I want answers. So uh, there's that. The, the armor looks great. It looks great on him. Uh, I can't wait to see exactly what it does and what the cost of that armor is. Um, I'm trying to cycle through this timeline there. Now, I said I wasn't going to really touch on it um, or elaborate, but there was a moment I'm playing through it right now where let me turn this down so you guys can't hear that. Um, but yeah, this from your comments, I saw one comment that said uh, cash has some type of attachment to a deity and this one here has oh oh this is something this might be a little tip oh there's the little deity with the the glowing head and then the matron of ravens and then cash in the middle now i didn't notice this during the episode but it looks like cash long flowing hair buffness uh look like a handsome dude but with the three x's on his is it on his right arm, his left arm? I think on his right arm. And this deity is holding three lightning bolts in his hand. So I wonder if those lightning bolts are just uh, repre representing uh, the X's on his forearm. I, I still don't know what it means. Um, nothing that points out like the significance of the, the, uh, the different color eyes. But that could be a thing. Um initially when i saw the the different color eyes i gotta pay attention i think they're blue and yellow i'm not sure uh but i thought maybe it had something to do with the moons uh rudeus and i always forget the other one but uh, i don't think that's the case because they're red and white um so we'll have to see exactly what that means but this is something to keep an eye on but sadly i feel like it's not going to be something we touch on until next season uh the whole dream state uh, with uh, Vax, Vax's eyes glowing and him going into the world, seeing all the deities um, kind of up close and personal and then being able to fight with Pervon. That was awesome. I didn't uh, initially I, I noticed the armor, but I didn't think it was Pervon because like based from the the calamity, Brendan Lee Mulligan's description, um, he just looked maybe that's with age too in calamity. Uh or not even because th th that's way back in the past, like a thousand years or something you guys said, but he, he, he looked bulky in stature in the way the animation was. I just pictured him from calamity being like this, this, uh, frail, not, not frail, but skinny slender, uh, in like a tuxedo. I don't know why I'm thinking like purple hair, but he, he sounded kind of like a butler. If you want to, if you can imagine that a butler in animation form, uh, like an Alfred uh, in animation form, uh, if that makes sense. But that's what I pictured and seeing him in the armor, all badass with the sword and all that. And then seeing him kneel to Vax and saying he is the new champion or whatever he said. That was a cool moment. Um, I just wonder exactly uh what that means for Vax. I don't know if we had the scene at the end here 
where he's looking in on uh it looks like a, a man sick dying his wife caring for him or looking over him um on his deathbed and then the matron of ravens just hanging over watching like he's ready to take uh his soul or whatever i i don't know uh i don't know I, I feel like the matron could do that herself but i also wonder why he had him or why she had him looking in on that does he have to do something to activate it or what Th this is me just spitballing I, I could be overthinking it but um you guys know i like to go off on my tangents and just kind of think of possibilities whether they come true or not it's it's fun to theorize and uh stuff like that especially with with a game like D D and uh vox machina where all these things are a possibility uh it's fun to think and you guys also let me know i didn't mention it uh for going back to vex's death uh the reason that she did die in the campaign is because she rolled a one in a critical uh, critical role, no pun pun intended. Uh, she wrote a one, a one in that moment where 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 death was imminent. She wrote the one. That's crazy to me. I can't wait to see it in the campaign. It'll still be a shock to me, especially th that's one of those scenes. I think I'm really gonna appreciate the build up to when I'm watching it in the campaign. Uh, that's pretty far in. I think you guys said it's after that point. Uh, from that point to the end of the campaign, it's about 77 episodes. And I think another reason why I, I wasn't sure or I, I kind of thought it was a possibility at the beginning of this episode that she could be dead is because a lot of these things, it's like, OK, they got multiple seasons they got to go through. There's no way, way there's, they're just going to kill off their main character or one of their main characters this early on. But with me knowing that campaign two is folk, at least I'm pretty sure it's focused on the mighty nine. It could have been a, a situation where they were like, OK, we're we're kind of going through this story fast. Uh, we're coming up on the end. We don't need all these characters and we need to change some things, add some stakes um, before we get to the mighty nine. So we have the characters at our disposal a little bit which sounds messed up to say especially when we love vex and vex and so many of the other ones as much as we do uh but i thought there, there was a slight possibility in my mind that she was going to stay dead along with you guys' comments so i'm glad it's not the case but we'll see exactly what comes of it uh in vax's situation now so uh i know i said i was going to keep this brief um i, I with i wonder what in the moment when Vex came up to Vex and he just kind of relinquished uh, the fight and just stood there, let him swipe past him. I, I don't know exactly what that meant or signify uh, other than, again, uh, signifying uh, their bond and his willingness to listen to her um, and kind of let her uh, th they support each other. And the fact that he just let it go let it be just off a couple based off a couple words that she said um i wonder why that ended the battle and nothing happened to him pravon's sword just kind of went right through him I don't, I don't know exactly what that was so uh i don't know if that'll be elaborated on but that's something i'll have to think on and maybe discuss for uh the next batches of episodes um as far as this creature uh in this amulet i'm looking forward to i i, I have a I, I don't know how many creatures it can hold but i wonder if she can collect multiple uh and just have them on call um and i, I need to see exactly how she calls them out does she just have to think of them can she call them out at, all at the same time will she mm, if we get a if we get a situation where they have to use some stealth and sneak into somewhere i wonder if she can use that amulet to put everybody in into it in this little astral plane thing sneak past the gate or the guards wherever they have to go uh and then bring them out whenever she's in and needs assistance uh so to speak so that adds a, another interesting dynamic to the show um again as if we needed it but another great episode 10 out of 10 again uh like i said i don't see a dip in under 10 uh, so we're gonna keep it there the whole series is getting a 10 out of 10 for me at the moment we'll drop it if we have to uh 
this was episode four. Hope you guys enjoyed. We're jumping over to episode five. I'm going to watch that now. Record the intro. It's going to be a lot shorter since I, I made this one a little bit longer. Uh, I think this is going to be the theme of these drops. I'll make the first episode a little bit longer uh, and then dwindle down as we go through the episodes or if we have something major to talk about in the, the third and final episode of that said week. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't already, hit the subscribe button, like button, share it if you'd like. And I'll be here every week. Join the family, BC fam. If you're new, introduce yourself down in the comment section. I'm thinking about making up a Discord for you guys too. So not only can you guys discuss in the comment section, but you guys have a little community within my community of talking to each other as we build up and lead to these uh, week to week batch drops. Um, and plus, you guys said that they talk about and review the ep critical role that is about the episode each week on a live stream. I'd love to live stream myself and kind of watch that along with you guys. Or maybe that's something I can do in Discord. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll think about that. You guys can drop your your thoughts and um, uh, any advice you may have down in the comment section. I'll take everything into consideration. But uh, nonetheless, episode five, here we come. I'll catch you in the next one. Deuces.